Sure. One more time. The, the talk that is on the sign in front of the room is not the talk that I'm going to give. This one is about performance testing and on the sign is something about AI. Um, so just to make sure that you're in the correct room. And I think that the talk about AI is in A106. Uh, at least that's what it's written online. Okay, um, you can follow along the slides if you scan this QR code. Um, if you miss it, I will display it one more time a little bit later, but I will give you a second or two to catch it. Um, my name is Janis. I'm a strategic growth and innovation manager at Tech One Consulting. Um, I also used to be the lead of the Drupal Media Initiative, and I used to work at examiner.com, which used to be the largest Drupal website on the internet at the time. And uh, if you're working for a site like this, you have to be interested in performance, otherwise you don't survive. Um, we at Tag1 are our second all-time uh, contributor to Drupal. We have a global team of 100 plus experts and we have the largest concentration of core contributors at any organization. Um, and we also contribute a full-time uh, senior infra expert to Drupal Association uh, to help us run everything on Drupal.org so uh, that we can develop Drupal and all the modules and whatnot. Uh, we work with many clients from many different areas, enterprise, nonprofits, government, education, media, um, and we are especially known and specialized in performance related work. The QR code again for anyone that missed it. <laughs> I see some more phones. Um, so why, why do we, why are we even talking about performance? Like, why do we need it? Um, I like to say that when websites are slow, it's almost like letting people to stand in line in a bank. Like if you have a slow website, that's an equivalent of that. And nobody likes that, right? Um, and many studies show that slow websites turn users away. Uh, which affects your outcome, which might be that you're losing money or whatever else you're trying to do. Um, performance is also one of those things which usually, it, if it is neglected, issues sneak in slowly and you don't notice them at first. But when you do, you have a really big problem. Um, and things sometimes get hard to fix, especially if, you know, sometimes issues are lower hanging fruit, um, which are easier to fix, but sometimes issues are related to the architecture, to the design of the site, um, and those are way harder to fix. Um, and nowadays, like we, we are used to think about performance in, in terms of time to first byte, like when, the server starts delivering the web page, but it's really way more than that nowadays. Like the front end is getting more and more important, and um, like users do more and more interactions on the front end side of things. Um, and uh, on the other hand, front end is becoming heavier and heavier, which makes it slower. So we have to consider both. Um, and then there is also a question about sustainability. If you have a site that it's not performing well, you will consume more resources on the server side and on the client side, which at the end of the day means energy that is spent for no good reason, um, which affects the planet. So by making your website performant, you are saving the planet. One type of the projects that we do are so-called performance audits. Um, uh, it's kind of a thing when 
that I mentioned earlier, like there is a, a site that works fine, and then as traffic grows, as amount of content on the site grows, um, people start experience slowness and bad performance in general. And that's when clients approach us and ask us for help. Um, and this, this projects often happen way too late when all the, the baggage already sneaked into the, the, the project and quite often they are also like on a very tight schedule, like a week before go live or something like that. Um, and what we do is we review the site, provide recommendations for fixes. Sometimes we even help with fixing um, or um, assist the internal team to do it themselves. And we are seeing the same problems over and over again. Um, in Drupal, it's almost always something related to caching and misuse of caching. Um, problems with views and misuse of views, creating views that are too complex, things like that. Um, enabling way too many modules on the site. And the most important thing, in my opinion, is the team culture. Like if you don't have the team culture, if you are not thinking about performance every time when you're developing something and just ignoring it, then you end up in a bad place. And since we are seeing pretty much the same issues over and over again, it might make sense to try to automate like detecting and fixing them. Um, A little bit about history of performance testing. Um, Google Chrome team is a, a team inside Google that works on Chrome, obviously. Um, and their, one of their goals is to make the internet faster, like a very simple goal, easy to achieve, right? Um, their main metric is Core Web Vitals. Uh, this is like an industry strand standard to measure website performance. Um, if you never checked it, you have, uh, I think it's called Page Insights page, where you can check how your website performs. Work, okay. Um, where's my... Where's my... Nope, this one, I guess. Yep, okay, let's go back to where we stopped. Uh -huh. Okay, I'll wait for the next time. I apologize. Um, so where were they? Are, the Google Chrome team is trying to make the internet faster and using Core Web Vitals for that. Um, and they worked with open source platforms because they figured that we are running quite a big portion of the internet. And if you work with platforms, you have bigger effect on the internet as a whole. And that's why they reached out to us as a go-to partner when it comes to performance in Drupal. And uh, in the first round, we collaborated on adding lazy loading of images and iframes to Drupal core, which is already in. So now when you are configuring the display of images or embedded content, you can opt in to have it lazy loaded, which you should do unless the image is displayed above the fold. Um, and this immediately makes your site perform better. Uh, but we wanted to do more and um, threw ideas on the table. And we realized that while automatic performance testing is not the easiest one to tackle, um, it would certainly have the, long, the biggest impact long term. Um, and now I want to sidetrack a little bit because I mentioned Core Web Vitals. Um, I don't know if you're aware, but we have a new Core Web Vital uh, since the mid-March this year. It's called Interaction to Next Paint, and it's replacing first input delay. Um, and it's replacing FID basically because it's capturing interactivity of the page in a better way. FID was only 
tracking the first interaction, while IMP is tracking all interactions that the user does on the page, and then the metric is the longest one. Um, so you might check that out, because a lot of especially enterprise websites, it turns out uh, a lot of them that were passing before are not passing it anymore, because uh, it is basically just detecting the interactivity in a better and more realistic way. Uh, you can check the uh, Core Web Vitals report to see the stats. And if you want to learn more about AIMP, uh, we had a team talk with Adam Silverstein, which is a WordPress core, de core developer and also an engineer at Google that explained a lot more about IMP and how to reason about it and how to measure it on your website and how to fix it. So this is a little bit of derailment, but I think it's important and that's why I wanted to mention it. Um, back to Gander. 15 years ago, um, Net Catchpole Catch, which is also a performance topping maintainer for Drupal Core, opened an issue to add automated performance testing to Drupal. And more than a decade later, we finally have it, and Catch led the effort. Uh, he's the lead architect and developer for Gander. Um, automated performance, performance, as I already mentioned, is a long-term investment. Um, but it's well, very worth, worth it because um, before Gander, we were doing performance testing very rarely and manually, um, which meant that we had inconsistent tests, not standardized, um, and we were getting inconsistent results. And sometimes we were even getting plain wrong results. Like if you imagine that you are trying to test something that affects only pages with cold cache and you are testing it on an uh, environment with caches enabled, the results probably won't be realistic. Um, and these kind of things happened over and over again. With automated performance testing, we fix all those problems because we standardize things and everybody is speaking the same language. Um, and as I mentioned before, culture is very important, not just for client project, but, but also for our community work. So we need to include performance into our culture. And I think that Gander is already showing that it will do that. Because when, when people do something in core issue queue that degrades performance and it's covered by a test, it breaks and then they're like, oh, why did this happen? And then they research and then they learn about it and from then on they know. Um, we are using Gander in two different ways, in Drupal Core, and if you decide to use it on your module or on your website, you can do the same. First one is uh, more straightforward um, and we call it uh, performance assertions. And it's basically an extension of uh, JavaScript tests. Um, and when you're testing a page, performance metrics are being collected and you are asserting on them. Um, and this means that if you make something less performant, the test will fail. And then the other approach, the other way of using it is uh, to run tests on a regular schedule and to collect data to send it to a dashboard where this data then gets displayed, which let us uh, observe the long-term trends and spot anomalies in those trends. And we are already doing this for core. The dashboard that we're sending data to is on the URL that you see on the screen. Uh, and if you are a core, core developer, I would uh, invite you to start using it today. When you're writing tests, add assertions, and check the dashboard once in a while and see if you can find it helpful. And this is how the dashboard will look. Um, you will see some graphs uh, for each test that is being run and see how it performed over time. But you also have uh, traces on the other side for each individual test and you can go in there and you can actually follow everything that happened during that specific test, which is also useful when you're trying to debug performance issues. 
So now you will probably ask why Gander, why it's not like Drupal performance testing framework or something like that. And the reality is that the answer is because why not? Because we can. Um, and uh, since the base test class in core is the bread and butter of, of Gander, it's not the only part. Like we also have the dashboard, we have the default configuration. As you will see later, we have an, a DDL add-on that lets you get started quickly. So it's a group of things, technologies that make up Gander. Um, and we are also already developing and maintaining Goose, which is a load testing framework written in Rust. And uh, if you want to do load test, I would strongly recommend you to check it out. And Gander and Goose are partners um, that work together. Um, and I also think that we want, we need to learn how to market ourselves better. And Gander sounds better than automated performance testing for Drupal, right? <laughs> so. Um, and all this is not just theory. Uh, we already found quite a few issues that we were able to fix with Gander's help. The most important one um, is related to how flawed subsystem creates database tables. And it has a small impact on each individual site, but it had a huge impact on core test runs. With that fix, we saved 10% of time for each test run for core test suite, which saves a lot of time to developers and a lot of compute for the infrastructure. And we like to say that just by doing that, considering the scale of the community and development that is going on, Gander basically already paid for itself just with that fix. Um, but there are more, like we found ways to optimize number of queries in login procedure. Um, we uh, were able to improve basically all big pipe requests. We were, it, it removes a single query, database query from it. But since big pipe requests are usually heavily cached, that might be quite a big portion of that request. So it could have a big impact. And there are more and there are more coming. So. All this is not just theory, but it's already proving itself useful in practice. I touched on this already, but Gander is basically a new base test class. Like we have base unit test, we have base functional test, we have base JavaScript functional test and so on. And now we have base performance test. Um, it's part of Drupal core since 10.2. So you can start using it today, even if you don't want to be like on development versions. Um, and it's a special type of JavaScript functional test. Um, it currently collects those um, metrics that are listed there, um, but we would like to add more. And IMP is one of them. Uh, it's slightly more complicated because it's tracking all the interactions of the site, so we need to support that but uh, we would really like to see um, that as one of the metrics as well. So if you would like to contribute, uh, that's a really great opportunity. Um, a really neat thing about the performance test is that any JavaScript, existing JavaScript functional test can be converted. Uh, you basically just replace the base class and do what I will show you on this slide, um, and you can start using Gander. Um, here we can see a test that um, tries to log in um, and then measures performance metrics and asserts on them. Um, the two lines that happen at the top are not part of the performance test, so the metrics are not collected for those two. We call this test preparation, because sometimes you might want to do steps to achieve certain states that you want to test in. And then you can see this closure that starts with performance data. Um, everything, everything that you do inside of this closure, and this can be like anything that you would normally do outside, is when metrics will be collected. Um, and then when you have the metrics, 
you can start asserting on them. And here we can see that it's inserting a number of queries on specific queries that are run, cache requests, and things like that. So as I already mentioned, there are two ways to use it. One is performance assertions, and this can be done for any existing JavaScript test. You just change the base class and start putting things into that closure and adding assertions. Um, for assertions, it's better to use more deterministic metrics, like number of database queries, number of cache requests, things like that. You could theoretically also assert on, let's say, time to first byte or like uh, first input delay or something like that, some, some more front-end metric, but those tend to vary a lot. So if you would assert on a specific value, then you will get a lot of test fails. You could uh, assert on a range that you're happy with, but you have to understand that like the wider the range, uh, less random test fails you will get, uh, but you might allow things that you don't want to allow, and if the range is smaller, it's almost like um, asserting on a specific value. So if you decide to do that, you have to be careful um, what is the range that you choose. Um, we basically already saw that already. Assertions are like when you have performance data object, which is where all the metrics are put, then you can use the standard assertion functions to check whether the metrics are having the expected values. Um, if you decide to also use the dashboard long-term thing, um, then you basically run the same tests on a regular basis and send collected metrics to a dashboard using open telemetry. Um, we are using Grafana for the dashboard, but um, you could really use anything that speaks open telemetry if you don't like Grafana. Um, and then uh, you get something like this um, on Grafana, what, where you can see what's going on. And like if you go on each individual traces on the right side, you come to a page where you can see the timeline of the request and see which database queries fired, which cache requests happened, like everything in a timeline, so it's easier to um, debug any issues. Um, you can start adding performance assertions to existing JavaScript tests today, because as we said, it's basically just a JavaScript test. Um, if you want to start monitoring metrics over time, you will need to self-host Grafana, um, or you could use Grafana Cloud, which has a free tier, but the um, downside there is the data retention is only 14 days, and there is no anonymous access, which probably doesn't work great for contributed modules, but if you want to use it on your custom project, it might work just fine. Uh, locally, you can use our DDEV add-on um, that gets you started really quickly. Um, and um, yeah, I, I will show you how to do that shortly. Um, I would just want to mention that we also published the official documentation on Drupal Wiki, um, which you will get to if you go to tag1.com slash gander slash docs which is a redirect to drupal.org, so, because um, the main URL is way too long to be up here. And if you want to follow the news and updates about Gander, go to tag1.com Gander, where we already have a bunch of team talks and blog posts, and we are always adding more. And now to the DDEV demo, and uh, let's pray to the demo gods. <laughs> Okay. Let's zoom in. So, 
this is the documentation page that I was talking about. And if you go to, you have a bunch of information here, but if you go to quick start section, you have a few shell commands here. That you can basically copy and paste. And what this will do, um, first line, it will create a new composer project from standard Drupal template. Um, it will require uh, development dependencies for core. It will configure DDEV, and it will add a Selenium plugin for Chrome driver, which is what we need to run JavaScript tests. This is now DDEV configuration. I'm fine with defaults. And once I've done that, now I could start running standard core JavaScript tests. But to, to run Gander, to have Grafana and all those things, I need to add the, the add-on that we created, the Gander DDEV add-on. And when I do that, I can start running tests. And I already have Grafana in the stack, which I can access through the browser, and um, everything is ready to go. Okay, and now I run a single test, a single Gander test. Now I have to go into the web directory first, then I run it, and it's running. And now, if I go to Grafana dot, uh, what's the URL? No. The project name ddev site port 3000, so gander dot ddev dot site 3000. I already have Grafana here, but I have no data because my test has just started running. And in order for data to start appearing, I need to run it a few times so that Grafana has a few data points. And because we don't want to wait for 15 minutes here, I have been running tests on another DDEV instance for uh, a few hours, which is this one. And then when you run it a few times, it looks like this. This is also running locally in DDEV environment, in another DDEV environment that I created exactly the same way um, just two hours ago. Um, and that's how you can start playing with, with Gander in your local environment. We are looking for early adopters. Um, if you are a core developer, just the fact that you know that Gander exists is great. When you do your next merge request, start adding assertions to your tests. Especially if you're working on performance-related fixes, definitely add assertions so that uh, the, fix, the, the, the issue won't sneak in uh, unnoticed. Um, you can start using the dashboard to see how core is performing long-term. Um, and we're also maintaining two tags in the core issue queue one called Gander, which is for Gander features, and one called performance testing discovery, which is for things that we identify with Gander and can and should be fixed. Uh, if you are maintaining, uh, maintaining a contributed module, um, you can start adding assertions to your tests without any changes. It will work out of the box. Um, if you would want to have a separate dashboard for your module, uh, then a DA won't provide you with a test runner for that because it's, uh, it's quite more com computationally intensive because it needs to run all the time. But since we're using GitLab now, um, you could, in theory, point these tests to a runner that you provide or find a sponsor that provides for you. It's, it can be basically any like virtual machine or 
some some kind of machine that that, that is only dedicated to that. Um, and this way, you could uh, start using dashboard um, even for contributed modules. Um, if you would like to do that, reach out to us and we'd be happy to help because we would like to see adoption. If uh, you want to use it on your custom project, and I strongly encourage you to do so, and you are already running automated tests in your workflow, then start adding assertions to those. Um, and um, again, as I mentioned before, you can self-host Grafana or use Grafana Cloud. And uh, yeah, if you need help with that, you can reach out as well. And most importantly, spread the word about Gender. Like tell your friends and colleagues about it, uh, mention it in the issue queue if you are participating in an issue about performance, um, talk about it, write about it. Um, it, is, it would be a great help. And uh, yeah, start automating performance tests now and let's make Drupal faster. Thank you. And now we do have time for a few questions if you have them. Um, yep. Nothing. So for if you are running performance tests with intention to put it on the dashboard, you have to run them all the time, like every 10, 15 minutes. And that takes quite a lot of CPU power and it's, it's also quite a good idea to have a dedicated server to do that, that to have consistent results. Um, and as you know, <laughs> core, uh, for core, DA provides such runner, uh, but it's not financially viable for DA to provide such runners for every contributed module. Um, and that's why this is not possible. But with GitLab, in theory, it would be possible to point to a, like an outside runner and use it that way, which wasn't possible before we switched to GitLab, which is great. Uh, I should probably, next time I should repeat the question. The question was, what is DA not providing for contrib? Yes? Um, the question is, does it work for Lando? Yes, it should. We. We don't have like the official extension for Lando yet, but um, we know that a lot of people use it. So um, there were already like people brought it up that we should have support. Um, the add-on doesn't really provide much more than Grafana and Grafana related stack. So if you're using Lando and you are running tests inside Lando, it should already work. Um, if you're using it like to run JavaScript tests, so you have Chrome driver in place and all that. Um, the only thing that you would have to do on your own um, that our DDEV add-on provides is the whole stack with Grafana. There are a few services like, uh, that you need to do, but everything else should already be in place. And I think, I'm not very familiar with Lando, I didn't, I just used it once, uh, but I think that somebody that understands Lando and has a little bit of understanding of DDEV can check the DDEV add-on and should have a pretty good idea what needs to be done. Any more questions? Yes. Um, the question is, what is on our, on our roadmap? Um, as I said, we would like to add more metrics. INP is one of them, and then other core vitals, uh, web, web vitals. Um, Catch is also currently working on some metrics around the size of JavaScript and uh, CSS assets. 
so that we could measure how big those assets are and assert on that because the size of these assets directly um, translates into the front end performance usually. Um, and besides that, just gaining adoption. Gaining adoption primarily in core community, uh, but also among contributed space maintainers and developers and custom projects. Yes. Um, so the question is for custom projects, basically how you do it, right? Um, first thing to do is to use, when you're writing your test, is to use the performance-based test class, which will then allow you to do that closure where you can collect metrics. That's the first step. Um, and then if you want to do the assertions on the metrics, you do that in the test and run it, and if it passes, it passes. If something isn't in the expected values, then it will fail. If you want to add the Grafana dashboard to the whole story, you have to have Grafana somewhere, either self-hosted or cloud or whatever, um, and then you have to provide the environment variable with the URL to the open telemetry endpoint where the data should be sent after the test and if the, the, the if PHP unit sees that this environment variable is set, um, it will try to send data to that endpoint. And then from then on, OpenTelemetry takes care of sending it to the storage and then to display it in Grafana. Um, and all these things are described in the docs, like what the environment variable is, how to do it, and uh, so if, you, if you're looking forward to do that, definitely check the docs. And if there is something in the docs that is not clear or wrong, which is always possible, reach out and we will fix the docs. <laughs> I literally did it yesterday because the DDEV demo stopped working yesterday. <laughs> Sorry? Um, um, if you... The question is, do you need a, an account on Grafana? Grafana is an open source software, so you can self-host it, which is what we do for the core dashboard. Uh, if you don't want to deal with that, because you know, especially if you don't have your own infra team, it can be complicated and overwhelming, there is Grafana Cloud offering, um, which is commercial, is their commercial project product, but they have a free tier that has limitations, but for the use case that we have, it should be plenty good enough. And for that, you need to have an account on Grafana, obviously. Because I think that they will ask you for a credit card, but they won't charge it, or no, I don't, I'm not sure. Um, but free tier is definitely free, as the name suggests. Yes? you have to run it through PHP unit because it's a PHP unit based class. Uh, the question was uh, whether you have to use it with PHP unit or some other testing tools. And yeah, it's a PHP unit based thing. So you have to use PHP unit. If there are no more questions, thank you very much for coming. Um, and I hope that you will find Gander useful.